All right, in this video, we are working with a differential equation x squared y double prime plus x y prime plus in parentheses x squared minus one ninth times y equals zero. Now, if we can recognize that this differential equation is in a very particular form, and that's right here in blue, then it's going to make our life a hell of a lot easier. This equation was worked out by this guy right here, Bessel, and therefore these are Bessel functions. Okay, to continue, let's compare the equation that we are working with to the formula. We can see that our v squared is the same thing as 1 9, and from this we can calculate v being 1 third. Now this is called the order of the function or sometimes even called the index of the function. Now, to solve this equation, we're going to have to notice that our order is one of the two kinds, non-integer or integer. Since we are working with non-integer, Bessel worked it out that the general solution can be written up as we can see right here. The C1 and C2, they are two constants, and the two J functions are Bessel functions of the first kind. Since our order is non-integer, therefore our two j functions will be linearly independent. The first j is one-third and the second j is with negative one-third. Okay, a lot of times in math classes we just leave it as is and this is good enough. But in this video, we're going to continue. So, what are these J functions? Like we said, these are Bessel functions of the first kind. Here's their formula. This is what they actually mean. If we want to continue, we're going to have to take this and plug them in into our general solution. So, that's what we see down here. Our general solution equals c1 and the c2 stay unchanged they are just two constants but for instead of the two j functions we're going to plug this giant formula in for the first one instead of the v we plugged in one third and in the second one instead of the v we plugged in negative one third here we just cleaned up some of the constants we can see these ones we can clean up and we can rewrite them now I move it up so I can make some room for myself. And to continue, let's see, what can we do? We need to expand our two sums. In both cases, m goes from zero to infinite. So clearly we won't be able to write up every single term of this summation. So we're just gonna write out our first three. Here it is. For the first one, c1 x one third times and in parentheses we can see the terms of the first summation for the first uh, term m equals zero right here this is what we get when we plug in m equals one we get this and this is what we get m equals two and dot 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 so on for our second summation this one we can see the resulting terms right here okay so, to continue, we arrive to the point where we need to deal with these weird little thingies right here. They are called the gamma functions. Now, to deal with these, we have two different ways. If you're brave, take uh, the definition and all these properties, and one by one you can work them out. But in this video, we're going to check it out, and we're simply going to jump to these tables and for every single gamma function we're gonna go and look in the table and take their values and this is what we're gonna end up with every single gamma function right here gamma function of four third is or has a function has a value of 0 0.8933 there's a few more uh, decimal places there with but we don't care this is good enough for us. So, there you have it. Every single one plugged in. 
and now we can see that these are just numbers over here again just numbers so let's clean it up a bit so we can see it better and here it is every single term cleaned up and in the parentheses we can see that we obtained nice little polynomials and this is what we're going to call our final solution for our Bessel function that we've been working with. All right, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up and uh, have a great day.